close to the speed of light is a kind of elixir of life. Because time slows down close to the speed of light, special relativity provides us with a means of going to the stars. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Llamascapes. It is day 35 now. Uh, I took the last few days off because I had a, a bit of a, you know, real life trip vacation to go on, which I'm going to throw some clips up here. So you might be thinking at first, oh, hey, this is this is nice. What's this? Just they went down to the beach. Oh, well, no, there's there's a little more going on here than just the beach. You see, this is SpaceX's Starbase uh, down in South Texas. There is the Starhopper, which was their original test vehicle uh, to, to actually test out their Raptor engines. Uh, and, we, and we got this beautiful drive-by footage, which somehow my phone managed to capture. I'm there in the driver's seat. My fiance is making this beautiful recording to share with everyone. Um, honestly, this is something that I'm, I'm really into as, I guess, like a hobbyist. I really try to uh, follow on, on different sort of space operations and... and you know, learn about uh, different vehicles that are launching. And and specifically in this case, uh, I'd, I'd love to see a launch happen one day, uh, especially with a booster, maybe their their first booster test flight. I might try to go down. Um, see, we, we live in Houston. So yeah, I, I made the drive <laughs> from Houston down south. Um, yeah, it's, it was it was awesome uh, seeing all that stuff up close and personal. You really don't understand the size of some of these vehicles until you really get there. So yeah, that's everything I have to share for my little weekend vacation. And, you know, uh, I did play a little bit. I got a few dailies in here and there, but I, I wasn't able to stay quite on top of all of them. I think I did Nimi Forest and, uh, and a few shop runs. Uh, but aside from that, I did a little bit of wood cutting. Uh, got a fair bit of progress towards our goal of 76. Uh, yeah, time to, to really start working on those dailies, though, and try to play catch up. First time buying anything from this shop, but there's the weekly D&D token that I have been searching for. Gonna use that on penguins. Uh, definitely worth it. I mean, 100,000% worth it. Uh, but ideally, I hold on to those points for a little bit, so I might just hold this token in my bank for a bit. Well, given that I have been collecting my broad arrowheads the past few days, I thought I would go ahead and burn through them. And there's 75, which is the requirement for River of Blood and is the highest fleshing requirement for any quest. Uh, you do need a higher level for some various achievement diaries, I believe. Uh, but for the time being, I think I'm mostly just going to leave it at 75, uh, leave it there, and let the broad arrowheads stack up to eventually just burn to 99 at some point. In the midst of a long day of woodcutting, thought I'd come check my oyster. And hey, you know, fortunate component, can't get upset about that. Quest done, back to my roots for a nice chunk of woodcutting XP and, and a few other things too. The Slayer and Agility are pretty solid. Uh, something I, I didn't mention in the last clip either, giant oyster. Yeah, it's, it's day 36 now, by the way. Another important quest done, Grim Tales. Now... Not important for any unlocks, but important for the XP drop, getting me 76 woodcutting. This unlocks the branches of Darkmire, so I'm going to go knock that out. And there we have it, quest complete, branches of Darkmire done for the big XP tome. We all know what it's going straight into. And the reason I was rushing so hard to get this done, you see it is 50 minutes before reset, I am now 67 herb lore. I get another 100,000 from the world wakes, I believe. Yeah, and then I'm going to do my troll monthly. Just just a little more XP I could squeeze out of it, so I thought I would push for it. And yeah, I got it done just in time. Whoops, I actually got things confused. No, I can now get Wild Gothic Sleeps complete, and I have a, a high enough level for that. Um, I also have a high enough level now to finish the Hard Wilderness Diaries, but I don't have quite enough time to do either of those. But that's okay. You know, 67 is good enough uh, to, to give me a nice chunk from the Troll Monthly. And we're back raiding on Mazcab. It wasn't quite my worst showing so far, but it, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't great. Um, <clears throat> anyway, let's see what the loot is. 
this time around, yeah, we'll leave the raid and collect loot. Hey, you know, that's that's not too bad. Uh, decent chunk of techie there. Uh, charm that I might just hand in for reputation. And I, I like the blue charms here, too. Well, I had a back-to-back, -back, so there's the second kill. It's actually the third kill. My friend had to bear with me because I died the second time around to Eretz really early on. Anyway, two kills down for the day. Someone just got a codex. Let's see. Ah. Uh, well, look, no codex, but good techie, another burial charm, magic logs are nice. Arid bones. Wow, that is a ton of arid bones. That's awesome right there. Yeah, that, that is a ton of prayer XP. That's nice. Something I didn't point out is that I did all of my woodcutting antiques, so I have just about 10,000 antiques saved up between the planks that I already made and the logs that I have sitting here. Now, I plan to start doing construction contracts from 60 onward, ideally to get all of the unlocks. So, yeah, apparently planks go a lot, lot further whenever you do construction contracts. So we'll see how just well, uh, how well that does. Also, I've moved my um, miscellanea over to Mahogany's simply because I heard there's something like a thousand XP a plank there, and that just makes them, you know, absolutely worth it. Uh, also, faster construction contract points etc. So, time to see how this is. Starting day 37 with a little bit of dungeoneering so that I can finally unlock something else, which is the scroll of proficiency. I believe it's, uh, it's one of these. Here we go. Scroll of proficiency, which unlocks proficient construction. Um, I started doing construction contracts last night, got, you know, up to level 63, almost 64. And then I realized, oh, hey, I should just, I should, I should really unlock this. Uh, this will help, especially on like the few houses where I can't quite carry enough planks in my inventory between my inventory and a spirit terror bird. This is perfect. Um, and it's just going to be nice in the long run too. Oh, and I thought it was worth pointing out that I, uh, between disassembling things uh, and actually making a few things like fishing rod automatics uh, ahead of time, I did get 27 invention taken care of, which means I do have augmented item maximum level 10. Uh, so that's a that's a nice thing to have. I uh, didn't have to augment and destroy that second Black Sally. And we've just hit our first nice little milestone here. Plank box unlocked. That's going to make things a lot nicer. And with the build of these drawers, we are getting a big construction level. That is level 75 requirement for two very important quests. One being Plague's End, which we're inching towards, and another being Nomad's Elegy, which, hey, we already talked about it, but Urn Enhancer, we, here we come. At some point soon, I will be going the rest of the way to level 79 construction, uh, though there are a number of quest requirements that can help me towards that. Uh, I just, I honestly just need a few more mahoganies, um, so waiting a few days for it is fine. But 79 is what you need for Lord of Vampirium, uh, and then immediately after that you'll, you'll want 81, I believe it is, for Pieces of Hate, uh, which should be the highest construction requirement. But, you know, these levels are flying by with contracts, super chill. Uh, and actually, I think I can go upgrade my, um, yeah, I can upgrade my plank box once. So that will be a nice, uh, a nice addition. Another quest down, the Path of Glaufrey. Have about five more quests that I want to take care of today. So let's get rolling. Another quest done, the Prisoner of Glaufrey. Though this isn't required for anything, it is a juicy chunk of XP. I mean, just, just look at that. It's fantastic. That's over 200,000 experience. Got me two levels here. Just, yeah. T take, spend the 20 minutes, do the quest. It's worth it. And there's the Dream Mentor quest complete for a little little bit of XP, little, uh, you know, quest points. But really, this is useful for, you know, the quests that follow it, right? while Guthic Sleeps being one of the big ones. And this lamp is going to be going into strength because, yeah, I don't really need the range anymore. Another quest down for the day, King's Ransom. I think that's number four. Uh, but anyway, use the lamp on her blower. And there are the Knight's Wave training grounds done. So I unlocked the uh, T60 and T70 prayers once I'm at the uh, the right level for them.
And by right level, I mean literally the next prayer level will have the T70 prayers unlocked. And there is a big quest complete while Guthix sleeps. Here we go. Herblore 1. Let's see. Herblore 2. Maybe Herblore again. And then finally, Herblore again. 73. Level 73. All for free. Uh, two more for the Prif level, seven more for River of Blood. Yeah, yeah, making pretty good progress. And I managed to get all of this done just before my weekly reset this week. Uh, it's happening in like 40 minutes or so, so I can go do Herbie Werby and get a little uh, get a little more juiced XP out of that. Another quest complete, Forgiveness of a Chaos Dwarf. Two quest points. Uh, the 30k strength is nice. The other two aren't that relevant. But importantly, this is access to the Chaos Dwarf Battlefield. So I can get some hand cannons, useful for training invention. Uh, and I, you know, have a small chance at getting a dragon pickaxe. I think I'm going to go get a few hundred kills maybe. Um, pick up a few hand cannons, which I'll use on invention. And if I don't see it, then, you know, I'm not going not gonna to really go for it. I've, I've gone into the whole spiel already. Well, a friend of mine informed me that we no longer need crackling components that hand cannons offer uh, in order to get crackling or uh, explosive components. Those are no longer used for crackling, even though it is still a good perk to have. So, yeah, yeah, two is where we're going to end. Um, I may still use them for invention, or I may just wait until I get a sun spear and go through those, uh, you know, as normal. But, uh, yeah, yeah, we only ended up getting... Maybe a few hundred kills here. Um, not, didn't get spooned. Uh, so, yeah, we gotta move on. King of the Dwarves complete for another 150,000 XP across the board. Picked up a mining level and a strength level. Just one more strength level to go, though. So, I have some interesting content to take care of. And by interesting content, I meant doing unabridged Fremenic Saga. So, there's the first one done only three or four more to go uh but they give some pretty decent stuff and yeah i'll throw this in attack second saga complete unabridged that is vengeance done yoink all that xp and it's definitely going into agility uh yeah there actually are three more after this i mean i knew there were five in total it's just that i want to do fuck it to them and fuck your block off but i'll go ahead and do nadir as well just to you know, have full completion. Another unabridged one done for a giant chunk of strength XP and a, a decent amount of dungeoneering. Uh, but yeah, strength. I mean, <laughs> 75.7k. Four out of five. There's Nadir complete. And there's the abridged. Unabridged. This is going straight into attack. I mean, 11,000 thieving. Come on. And there's the last of the Fremenic Sagas, complete for very nice XP. This right here, I mean, 5,300 tokens is nice. This right here, big strength drop, level 79 now, which allows me to do the Mighty Fall. Turns out this is actually a requirement for the Nomad quest, so I had to, you know, take a little detour. But uh, time to get to working on those. As it turns out, level 70 prayer is one of the requirements for Nomad's Requiem, which I just completely overlooked. So there's 70 prayer from my Arid Bone stack. Uh, also important that I got the level 70, uh, level 70 prayers now. Those are quite useful. Last quest done for the day, Nomad's Requiem for three more quest points. 70 zeal. Now this is really nice. Um, going to save it and I think eventually use it on prayer. I remember in my Road to Comp series I used it on attack, but uh, yeah, definitely prayer this time around. Um, not sure if I'm going to use it just yet, but, but it's here for when I need it. Starting day 38 with the completion of Summer's End. Nice chunk of prayer XP and ultimately this means I can finish the Hard Wilderness task. So I'm going to go do that. So I just had a penguin wander by me, Agent 007 appeared, and I got a hard casket for the first time from one. And then I realized, hey, you know, maybe I should uh, go ahead and open these up. So let's see what I got. Uh, Reroll this easy. Okay. Yeah, total garbage from easies. That's pretty normal, though. 
Uh, and then, yeah, let's, let's re-roll this one too. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Medium, uh, a page. All right. And hard whole bunch of nothing. Surprisingly. Wow. That, that, it's probably the worst set of clues I've ever opened. <laughs> and by handing this in, that should be completion of the wilderness hard tasks. I'm going to claim those rewards. And there we have these two beautiful lamps, both of them going straight into her blur. Oh my goodness. 77,000 a piece. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's 16k from level 75. If I went and did my Herbie Werby right now, we would have the Plague's End requirement there. Now, I'm still short on Prayer, on Summoning, uh, and I guess on Slayer by one level, but we're really closing in on that. And here's another part of RFD done. Ceramic Vars freed, if I can click them. There we go. Time to do the most annoying part. And with that, we've completed the last part of RFD. I made three snakes just in case, and, uh, well, one of them burned. And there we have the quest complete pop-up. 10k cooking, 10k agility. The agility's quite nice. And, uh, it's time to fight this bad boy. Oh, and for those of you who don't know, or if you are maybe an OSRS player and they don't have this, you can actually use the four different Grigories you get on each other. And then it becomes something that you can swap between and you just, you know, make a selection and you get the other type much, uh, you know, much simpler to use. It's nice to condense that, uh, get a little extra bank space. Okay. I don't even know why I bothered bringing food in. I just completed the entire fight in about 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, that was very easy. Culinaromancer done. Um, need to claim that lamp. I had a full inventory. Not sure where I'm going to get it. Oh, it turns out the lamp gets sent to your bank. I think that's the only quest in the game that does that, but yeah, I mean, come on. We just got to throw in Herbler, right? And let's pick up that big level 75 for Plague's End. Uh, just five more levels needed for River of Blood, and I may end up getting that before I actually get the Prif requirements. We'll see. We've successfully completed the hardest quest in the game we got the monkey guard to the pile of bananas and there's completion of do no evil for a ton of xp 30k construction and 40k crafting specifically are very nice to get and some more bank space reclaimed with the cramulet our man in the north complete really burning through quests today feels pretty good and uh yeah it's gonna help on the the minifos rep grind Quest complete, glorious memories, and that gives us some XP. Uh, the the tome here is just going to go straight into attack, I think. Yeah, all, all three chapters going into attack because, yeah, I mean, 80 attack will be nice to, to pick up pretty soon. And there is full completion of the easy through hard Fremenic Diaries. It's all just going straight into Herblore, as we all know. Uh, but this is actually a quest requirement, too. I think it's the only diary that's tied into a quest, which is interesting. Another big quest complete. Blood runs deep for two quest points and Balmung. Um, yeah, the 450,000 XP reward. I'm actually going to save this until my prayer is over level 75. Um, because, I mean, putting in prayer is, is clearly the best of those options. So I just... Yeah, I can't quite claim that yet. Another quest done. The Void Stares Back. And I just made a huge mistake. I didn't realize these quest rewards could go into summoning or prayer once they're above 75. So I just blew 100k and put it straight into attack. I got 80 attack. Uh, well, that's that's a little painful. Um, I'm, I'm going to regret that a little bit, but... I guess 100k isn't isn't the worst. Another quest done, the Mighty Fall, and these lamps I'm going to be sure not to use until later. Well, that was my breeziest Beastmaster. By far, very little food used. Vampirism helped a lot. Loot is meh. And there I've completed all of the God Emissary tasks so that I can, well, contact this and get a skill boost whenever I need, once a day. 
on to day 39, and after starting Nomad's Elegy last night, I realized that after the first two fights, I'm probably not going to be able to make it through the third fight normally. Uh, so I'm literally just going to sandbag myself and throw bodies at this guy to max out my armor of trials and then take him down. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the damage reduction and the bonus damage you deal combined is just really nice. So I'm just I'm just going to die five times. Hey, I'm, I'm not hardcore for a reason, right? <laughs> Quest complete. Nomad's Elegy. 50k construction, 50k mining, woodcutting, combat XP. Very juicy altogether. And this is intentionally going into uh, into strength, which is going to give me 80. So that's nice. Um, yeah, then we rub these other... These other three lamps for a nice, uh, <laughs> yeah, 200k XP overall. And importantly, I can now get the Urn Enhancer. The thing that I've cared so much about that I've put off so much training for. Time to do that. Time to stock up on some urns. And then we get rolling on uh, fishing and cooking. There we go. Big boy acquired Urn Enhancer. It cost quite a bit getting the subtle components. Uh, and it took quite a few sapphires to... Uh, to get the clears, but it was worth it. Something interesting happened today, and that is Flash Powder Factory entered Spotlight. Now, the minigame Spotlight, for those of you who don't know, uh, it basically means that you get this reward currency called Thaler uh, once per minute as opposed to once every five minutes uh, whenever you participate in the minigame that's on Spotlight. Uh, and the very cool thing about Thaler is that you know, say you want to get your Void equipment. Well, if Pest Control is on Spotlight, you can redeem Thaler for pieces of Void. And it basically shortens the grind that you have to do it at any given minigame. Uh, now, important thing about Flash Powder Factory is it gives bonuses for Herblore, one of the you know classically hardest skills to train on Iron Man mode. Um, and if you spend just about 10 hours there while it's on Spotlight, you can get some various pieces of equipment uh, that make things a lot easier. It essentially gives you like a 5 to 10% um, experience boost or, or supply boost, uh, depending on how you look at it. Uh, and it'll help a lot in making overloads specifically. Just getting extra doses to put into overloads is, yeah, it's really useful. Um, so given that it's on Spotlight for the next three days, I'm going to try to at least spend that full 10 hours there uh, that I need to unlock the the, the gear that I want, uh, which is the botanist hat and the modification for it, the add-on, uh, as well as three pieces of the outfit, the factory outfit, being the boots, the gloves, and the chest plate. Um, that's the ideal selection of stuff that you get out of Flash Powder Factory, uh, so that's what I'm going to aim for. Oh, I also want to point out that I did stock up on decorated fishing urns, and as soon as I get level 81 crafting, which I'm about 55k XP away from, I will get decorated cooking urns. Uh, either either actually getting the crafting level or waiting till tomorrow to do a, uh, a banner boost and make myself some decorated cooking urns, one or the other. Um... Yeah, I, I thought that was worth stocking up on. This is enough to get to about 85, so it's not going to get me all the way, but I don't want to make all of my urns right now anyway, uh, given that it gets a lot faster once you're in Prif. And yet, one more thing to add a note about. Uh, given that I've gotten my construction level up, I finally went and made myself the aquarium. Uh, I don't actually remember when you unlock it. I think it's at like 73, or at least that's when you get the prawn broker. So the aquarium is kind of a weird... Thing, but it basically gives you perks for fishing. Uh, so as you fish, you get these little currencies that go into it. You get these eggs that you can redeem. You get different perks. Uh, so basically now I can fish without using fishing bait. Uh, very useful. Eventually you can fish without using feathers for fly fishing. Uh, and it, all kinds of other things. I think eventually you get like a bonus catch rate as well. Um, but yeah, it's something that I got started working on at least. Oh, and the other day, whenever I was working on leveling my invention to 27, uh, I did throw my hand at trying to get some useful perks. The The number one most useful one to me is Wise, uh, ideally getting Wise 4 eventually. I do have Wise 1 now, so 1% bonus XP in whatever I'm doing, uh, as long as I can equip the Fishing Rotomatic in my main hand. So that means when I do woodcutting, fishing, cooking, I'm just going to be carrying this bad boy around and, you know, get 1% bonus XP uh, no matter what I'm working on. So that's somewhat useful.
All right, it is a very big time indeed. I have been fishing pretty much all day. You see these desert soles, catfish, beltfish really stacking up. But fishing rod matic level 10, disassemble, or if I can click it right. Yep, there we go. That's the good stuff, right? 459K, boom. Level 37, yeah. Yeah, 10 levels straight up. I, I love that. I have two more banked and an extra augmenter already. It's it's just going to be rolling from here. It's, I love it. And we're already back to working on quests. There's Kindred Spirits done. Specifically so that I can get, I mean, the Herblor XP is smithing. Very good. Agility is the important one here because I need 75 for Flash Powder Factory. So I'm just a little short. I'm going to have to do a little grinding. Uh, and also... Crafting XP lamp is nice. Just just all those lamps. Takes like 20, 25 minutes. Very worth it. Another master quest completed for two more quest points. Nice chunk of agility XP. You can see why I chose to, do, uh, to take care of that now. And a lamp that's just going to go into strength, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely just strength. Just finished my first run of Flash Powder Factory. Got 144 points, which I... Don't think it was too bad for my first try at it at literally ever. Um, nice thing is that every time I come out, I can get the fully restocked uh, Martin Thwaite shop for Black Claws uh, to turn into Swift components. <laughs> at least probably fully restocked. No matter what, I'm going to be buying it out. And we're here on day 40. I've been working on Flash Powder Factory quite a lot. Decided to take a little break to do some more fishing. Got my first Master Clue Scroll, which is... Kind of surprising. I mean, given how many other clues I've gotten so far, I just... Yeah, but that's that's a little note, noteworthy, I guess. Hopped into Rune Span to do my daily Rune Sphere. It's something that I haven't been doing that often. Um, I, I know that I did it quite a bit early on. I tried to really stay on top of it daily, but I kind of been putting it off uh, as I've been working on other you know quests and grinds. Um, trying to do it a little more often now, given that my ultimate goal is to get to 77 rune crafting without ever properly training the skill. Uh, so, you know, any bonus XP I can get from quests, uh, any XP I can get from something like Tears of Guthics, and then the occasional rune spheres sprinkled in should get me there just fine. And then I can do abyss rune crafting the rest of the way. Uh, something to note as well is that Rune Sphere is not like uh, other D&Ds, more specifically like Guthix Cash. I know something like Tears of Guthix also doesn't apply. Um, but bonus XP works on the Rune Sphere. So having the Wise Perk now on my Fishing Rod Automatic just gives me an extra 1% while I'm doing the full siphoning. And for the bonus XP drop at the end, the, the big 25k. Uh, so if I eventually have the Wise 4 perk, well, that's... 1,000 XP added on to every rune sphere just, you know, in, in the click of a button. Uh, so, quite handy. My real goal with the Wise Perk is to try and funnel as much of that 50,000 XP a day into slow skills. Now, early on, when I only have Wise 1, I mean, just getting the 50,000 a day is really difficult. Uh, but once I have Wise 4, it will be going into, you know, or I'll, be, I'll be trying to optimize uh, that 50,000 a day as much as I can. Um, so looking at things like, uh, you know, fletching, which is expensive, herb lore, which is traditionally pretty slow, or something like, you know, rune crafting, uh, which is also traditionally pretty slow. Uh, those are just, you know, primary targets uh, for that bonus XP. Well, I made a bit of an error. Turns out I already did my rune sphere for today. Uh, yeah, so this rune dust, I'm just going to bank it because then you can go in at any point and just just hand it in for the XP drop, which is nice. <laughs> but yeah, I, um, oopsie. And can I just say this whole doing flash powder factory thing, if you decide to go and do it, regardless of it being on spotlight, just deciding to definitely buy these claws in between every single game. Like I was already doing this regularly as a part of my shop runs. Uh, just whenever I felt like teleporting to Taverly and picking these up, I'm up to 17 Swift components, and that that right there is four more fishing rod omatics, or essentially uh, one and a half million invention XP. Uh, I mean, I know I need, uh, I think it's a dexterous in components to go alongside it, and and a few other things, but that's that's just fantastic. 
Another successful Beastmaster without dying. This time I was only the North Charger roll, though. Uh, let's see. Uh, I mean, that's okay, right? <laughs> it's a decent roll of Techie. Uh, and I guess Battle Staves, but yeah, it's, it's not amazing. All right, we are still grinding away at this. We have, oh, just over a thousand points. Okay, so we can get the Botanist Mask. We got to finish up the add-on, but we also have the gloves and the boots already. And we now have enough Thaler to pick up the chest piece. So we're going to pick up the factory top. And there we go. Three-piece factory outfit, acquired botanist mask, ba-boom. Man, I've earned like 50,000 Herbler XP doing this stupid minigame today. I like I can't really complain. That's pretty nice XP, but also I hate my life. I'm I'm dying. So I'm actually pretty proud of this one, but I have been playing this minigame for so long today. And this is my first time actually hitting the maximum number of points, which is 1260. So I'm, I'm going to get the full, I think it's 180 points uh, that you can get out of a game. Uh, yeah, 180 reward points. That is so nice. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? That that point total is over a thousand? There we go, botanist mask add-on, and yeah, I have some excess Thaler. What am I going to do with it? Oh, no one would have ever guessed that it would go into, uh, is it in here? Yeah, all of these, just all of, just by, by max, yeah, I wanted some VIP tickets. So, you know, it's two birds with one stone, there's the add-on, uh, yes, combine, Oh, receive items? Is that a... Oh, nice. Perfect. Yeah, beautiful Herblore outfit. I wish to never come back here. Out here doing myself a bit of a farm run, and with this Chinchampa, that's level 82 farming, but importantly, that is 2100 total. Boom. There we go. And... With that, even though I'm probably going to play like another hour or two tonight, that's where I'm ending the video. That grind was just too much for me, man. And I think I accomplished at least half of the other goals I, I just laid out in my last video. So that's where we're at. Day 40 done. Thanks for watching.